Laura with Chat and Tittle Vintage Type Readers. Welcome today as we take a look at an Electra 110 from the 1970s. And the reason I know it's from the 70s is um, the front paneling. Now, uh, most of you, you can date typewriters by going to typewriterdatabase.com. But the Electra series from Smith Corona is really hard to date. And so I just break them down into decades. Um, and then based on, um, you know, some people have like original purchase receipts in the database. And so um, based on that, I was able to, um, and I, you know, there's some measure of inaccuracy, I am sure. But um, this front paneling that kind of has the speckled look tells me it's from the 70s. Or if it has, um, you know, the wood paneling look to it on the front, that's also from the 70s. Now the solid black fronts uh, tend to be... Um, like that borderline between the 60s and 70s and the solid like cream or white um, tells me it's from the 60s. So that's how I date the Electra series. Um, but in, it, it is not entirely accurate and I just do it by decade, you know, 60s, 70s. Anyway, either way, this one's from the 70s. And so you probably have one that's in front of you or you got one or you're getting one and you want to know how to use it. So I recommend actually getting your typewriter out and following along. So pause if you need to go grab your typewriter and let's follow along. And um, also I'm going to say watch some of my other typewriter tutorials for the Electra series because they basically all work the same. <coughs> Excuse me. But you learn some... I. You learn something different from each video. They're a lot, it's very, they're very similar. Yes, because I have kind of like a certain pattern that I do in them. But I also say different things. Like this is a totally different intro. I've never talked like this in any of my videos. And they're all, so they're all a little bit different and you're going to learn something new in each one. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to grab a piece of paper. I'm going to start from the back. So back here is your paper holder. I hope you can see that. You might not be able to, but anyway, I'm, I'm kind of filling up the whole screen. But back here is a paper holder. Sorry that you can't see that, but I am going to load my paper. And the way you do it is there's a metal plate right here. And so you just set your paper right behind that and then turn the handle. And then your roller should grab that paper, bring it through and um, put it underneath the metal bar. Now I'm gonna scoot my paper over. I have it, it's not where I wanted it. So that's where the paper release comes in handy. You just pull that forward, adjust your paper, and then release it. Now to move your carriage, this is your carriage. Sorry, I, I have a different view on this video than I'm used to, so I, sometimes I don't realize if I'm in or out of the frame. I'm gonna try to look here. This is your carriage, and to move it, there's two black, um, and yours may be white, like tabs or sticking up, and you just pull that in, and it doesn't matter which one. You can do either one, and it'll move your carriage. Now, it's very common for these plastic tabs to break off, and if yours is broken, you can just use the remaining one. If both of yours are broken, you can use um, something um, uh, firm, uh, like a, a piece of wood or a plastic spoon or a pen cap. We've seen all kinds of stuff. Pen caps, <laughs> we've seen plastic spoons, um, actual pens. You can just, there's a piece of metal down there and you can attach something that's that has some um, stiffness to it and that'll just give you the leverage to um, move your carriage release. Okay, over here on the left side, um, and I know you can't see it, but yours should say one, one and a half, two on the top and there's a little shiny lever next to it. That is your line selector. So when you hit your return handle, which is this right here, it's gonna advance one, one and a half or two lines. Um, margins have to be manually set and to do that there are you know what I am just gonna 
No, I'm, there are two tabs back here. You just press down and drag. You can look at some of my other tutorial videos because they're from um, the top perspective. I'm trying to do a little bit of front because I, I do kind of get those requests sometimes and I can't really do both unless you just go watch different ones. Um, over here on the left side, you'll notice that the handle on this side kind of has like an extra lip or it's really, it's a button. And what that is for is when you turn the handle on your typewriter, you'll hear it click. Okay, it's clicking every half of a line, but sometimes it's not lining up exactly where you want. So this is for variable spacing or um, roller release, whatever you wanna call it. I don't know what they're called, but I press it in and now you can turn that roller and it, it frees it up. So you can place that wherever you want and then you release. Okay, let's open up the top. Again, I know you can't see inside, but the spool, um, this is where your ribbon spool is. And I recommend watching other tutorial videos so you can kind of see how they're threaded, all right? Um, your ribbon reversal is right here because when you get to the end of your ribbon spool, it's not the end of the ink in the ribbon, you have to reverse the direction. And one note, because people argue about this all the time and I don't know why they do, um, your ribbon will not reverse on its own unless it has a um, little grommet at the end of the ribbon spool. Um, so it's not about, about the typewriter as much as it is about the ribbon. And so um, most of the ribbons in ours do not have grommets. So you have to manually reverse, which isn't that big a deal. You just pop it here. And so you just go back and forth until you use up all of the ink in your ribbon. So when you hear people say, it should be reversing, it should be reversing automatically, um, and yours isn't, it, there's nothing wrong with your typewriter. You just don't have um, a spool with a grommet. And usually it's the older ribbons that have the grommets. Um, there are a few people out there who are making new ribbons with grommets in them, but you have to search for them. Um, but this takes a universal ribbon. We have them on our website. Um, we have single color and we have black and red combo. Um, but they are pretty easy to find. So this takes a universal ribbon with a half, uh, it's a two inch spool with a half inch ribbon. Okay. Um, this is your tab, um, so you press that and it tabs over, you set, and you clear. On this particular one, the tab does not set, so just be aware that I'm not going to be able to show you how to, other than you just hit, put it where you want, let's turn it on, you put it where you want, you hit set, and it should set your tab, oh, it just did. On my demo video, it didn't do it. So. Anyway, that's how you set it and you can clear it and it cleared it. Okay, so I this is the on off switch and I'm taking a long time. Let's speed this up. All right, here's your color selector. So black, red, if it's in the middle, it's not gonna type right. That's the stencil setting. So if you're having trouble typing, it's not imprinting well, check your settings, make sure it's firmly on the black or the red or reverse the direction of your ribbon. It could be either of those things. Down here, you have your space bar, power space. And then also on these electric typewriters, there's three keys that have an auto repeat, meaning you hold them down and they'll go ch -ch -ch -ch. So that's the dash, the period, and the X. Pretty cool. Um, what would you use that for? I don't know. Some people use it for typewriter art. Sometimes if you make a huge mistake, um, because there's no erase button on here. Now you can use um, whiteout, but I don't recommend it because the whiteout gets down into your typewriter and causes problems. So I personally don't use whiteout. Um, but when you make a mistake, you just backspace. Backspace does not erase, but then you can X through it. If you're gonna X through the whole word, which is usually what I do, or you can dash through it. Or if it's very similar to the letter that's supposed to be there, you can just type over it. However you want to do that is entirely up to you. Just know that when you're using a typewriter, it is not perfect. That's part of 
being a typewriter, writing with a typewriter, <laughs> is you're gonna have to embrace your imp imperfections. And for those of you who are OCD, that's gonna be a little difficult for you. You're gonna be retyping over and over and over. Um, and if that's what you wanna do, awesome. <laughs> but uh, the rest of us would just embrace your mistakes and keep going. All right, so that is the basics of um, the Smith Corona Electra 110. Like I said, they, it operates pretty much the same as all the Electra series. So I recommend going and watching other tutorial videos that I have for you on the Electra series. And I hope you have fun. Oh, by the way, shift, lock. Um, that's for uppercase. And symbols. That's what the lock is for. To release it, doesn't matter which one, just hit shift. And then people ask, what's the copy set? Really, that just determines how hard these type buyers are gonna strike your paper. I don't notice a difference, but you can kind of adjust it and see if it makes any difference in the, the color, you know, like if it's darker or lighter. I don't see a difference at all. So um, that is how you use your Electra 110 typewriter. On off switches here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. And it's a lot quieter, but um, yes, electrics are, are a little bit noisy. And we always recommend a non-slip typewriter pad underneath them because your electrics, well, all typewriters, but especially the electrics, have a tendency to wander and scoot as you're typing. All right, thanks so much for watching. You all have a great day.